All right, a few final rules that don't have to do with immigration or travel. These are just some general rules in the US that you need to know about that can be pitfalls for international students because they're very different from rules in other countries. So some campus and cultural rules. There is no alcohol on campus except for at the faculty house, which is a faculty club and at a bar in the student union building, which is called the draft and table. So you can't just drink alcohol all around campus or in your dorm room. Smoking is allowed in designated areas only, and it's almost never in, allowed inside in the US at all. Um, most places you cannot smoke inside. Americans are really sensitive to smell, whether it's extra perfume or it's person smells. So you want to make sure that you wash your clothes and wear deodorant, but not too much deodorant. Um, you have to do what you feel comfortable with, but it can be awkward if people are judging you based on the way that you smell, um, whether that is very perfumey or very not. Um, that's something to know culturally about Americans. UNM campus police are there to help you if you have an emergency on campus. They provide a number of different services. Their website is police.unm.edu, which you can check out in advance. They are on, uh, they are in Hokona Hall, which is across from the UNM hospital. They provide a safety escort service, which will drive you from one campus location to another if it's at night or if you're nervous. So you wanna take advantage of that. Um, by calling the campus number, which is on your student ID card when you get here. And um, it's 277-2241. They also have a bike registry. If you are going to ride a bike, which many students do, you want to be very careful because bike theft is a problem on campus. Um, so you want to register your bike in case they find stolen bikes. Um, you might be able to get your bike back. Uh, they are a real police force. They can make arrests. They wear weapons. Um, they wear uniforms and carry weapons on their body. Um, and they respond to emergency calls on campus. There are also security uh, people on campus who are not campus police um, and do not carry weapons and patrol police, uh, campus. So if you have an emergency in, on, and you're on campus, you're going to call the campus emergency number, which is on your logo card or you can use these blue poles that Mrs. Bean is pointing out here. When you need to call UNM police, you push the button and a UNM police person will be talking to you through the intercom on the blue pole. If you are anywhere else in the US, you wanna call 911. That's the emergency number in the rest of the United States and off of campus to call police and emergency services. If you have a non-medical or criminal emergency after hours, so you're stuck at a port of entry, uh, you don't know who else to call, there is a GEO emergency number, and that is 505 is the area code for Albuquerque. 277 is a number that is a campus number. And then 4GEO is the emergency, GEO emergency line and someone will answer that 24 hours a day. Bicycle safety is important. As I said, a lot of students like to wear, uh, like to uh, use bicycles to get to campus, very convenient way. And we have lots of bike trails around Albuquerque, but you wanna make sure that you're always wearing a helmet, you use lights at night, and you be very careful because not, um, not all roads are bike friendly and it is, uh, really important that you look out for cars. If you use the Google app on your phone, they will tell you the bike areas to ride. And you wanna make sure that you buy a, an expensive U-lock for your bike. Do not use a cable lock or people will cut it off. Um, bike theft is the most common crime on campus. And if you don't know how to lock your bike properly, you will also find um, that you come back to your bike 
and you have maybe the tire left on your bike or maybe the frame and no tires. So you have to be very careful to lock your bike with a good lock in the proper fashion. Otherwise, biking is great in Albuquerque. There is a bicycle map at CABQ, which is cityofalbuquerque.gov, that you can download and find all the great ways of riding your bike around the city. So here's Mrs. Bean again, very sad. Uh, her bike got stolen because she bought the cheap cable lock. Uh-oh, you don't want to be in that situation. All right, we're going to send you an e-packet, which has lots of different materials in it that explains some of these things. And one of those is car rules um, and safety, specifically with regard to New Mexico driver's license. So how do you get a New Mexico driver's license? You're going to need a license if you're going to drive regularly uh, and live in New Mexico for more than six months. If you're not going to drive regularly, you may be able to use an international driver license, but if you're going to have a car, the insurance coverage is going to be a lot more expensive or if renting a car, it's a lot more expensive if you have an international license. Um, a driver's license or state ID is also a good idea for everyone as a form of legal identification. You will be asked for identification if you try to cash a check or sometimes use a credit card or if you want to um, buy an alcoholic beverage, you're going to be asked for your ID. So it's inconvenient to carry your passport you probably want to get a driver's license or a state ID. This information will be in your e-packet, which we will send you in a week or two. When you are driving a car, you must have car insurance. You must pay your tickets. No bribes, as shown in the picture. Um, so no special request. If the police pulls you over, do not bribe the police. And if you're stopped by the police, the protocol is for you to put your hands on the wheel do not get out of the car and get out your license and registration and insurance, which you must carry in the car when you are asked by the police officer. So the protocol is you roll down your window, you sit in the car with your hands on the wheel, and when they approach the window, you get out your license and registration. I am sure that you have seen a lot of the high profile things about the police in the media recently. And so you wanna make sure that you're following proper protocol so that your actions are not misunderstood in any way, shape, or form. In addition, do not be like Homer Simpson. There is no drinking and driving. In Albuquerque, we take this very seriously. There are checkpoints for drinking and driving. You never want to drink and drive, use a designated driver, use alternative transportation. Even a little teeny bit of alcohol in your system will be perceived most of the time as above the legal limit. It's very tiny, the legal limit. So you wanna take advantage of Uber, Lyft, the Yellow Cab Company. Um, there is uh, ART, Albuquerque Rapid Transit, which is the bus. You can uh, take advantage of a service that's called Late Night. Um, which is through June through September, where you can have the bartender call and the city of Albuquerque will pick you up for free. So lots of ways to not drink and drive. And this is very, very important. Uh, if you are arrested for drinking and driving, your visa may be canceled and there are lots of financial and other kinds of repercussions. Some consumer related issues, there are a lot of internet scams these days. Do not send anyone money you don't know over the internet without specific insurance through PayPal or one of the other providers. And remember that no government office or bank is going to call you on the phone and ask you to provide your social security number or any kind of payment. If a government office or someone needs money from you, they are going to send you that in writing. They're not going to call you. They're not going to email you. And they're certainly not going to ask you to disclose your personal information on the phone. The only time you will be asked for personal information on the phone is if you have initiated the phone call to a, a credit card company, a bank, a social security card, uh, social security agency, or something like that. 
And if you do do transactions on the internet, make sure that you use uh, an insurance service um, like the PayPal insurance service if available. Housing uh, is also a complex issue and can have some legal repercussions. When you sign a housing contract, whether it's off campus as a contract, sorry, on campus as a contract or a lease off campus, it is legally binding uh, and you are going to need to honor the terms of the contract. So make sure that you read your lease and you understand it. If you need some help, uh, you can go to lawhelpnewmexico.org and ask one of their landlord tenant uh, advisors. Um, recently, there was an issue with that, but uh, we have used them in the past and they have been helpful. Um, and then there's also a legal aid free hotline if you have trouble with your landlord. Please be aware that if you have disregarded the terms of the lease, um, you probably will not be able to fight that situation against the landlord. All right, very important if you are an undergraduate and you are under the age of 21, you must be 21 to drink everywhere in the United States. So they take that very seriously. Um, so much so that an ID is required to get into bars and restaurants or to purchase alcohol. Even when I go to the supermarket, I'm 57 years old, I go and I have to show my ID. So they take it very seriously. Um, vendors and restaurants are fined very heavily if they serve people under the age of 21. And the police do try to trick them so that they make sure that they're following these rules. So it means that they all enforce the rule of ID in order to buy alcohol. In addition, it is a felony, which means a serious crime, to give alcohol to anyone who is under the age of 21. So if you're over 21, you want to be aware that you may not want to give alcohol to anyone under 21 because you will be responsible. There are some um, areas around campus which are known as student living areas and Albuquerque police has been known to send around police on Saturday, Friday night when they hear a lot of noise and this police patrol is called the party patrol and they will go into a party and ask people for their ID. So if you're hosting a party with alcohol, you wanna make sure all your guests are over the age of 21. All right, some more about sex, drugs, and guns. Um, this is our sex, drugs, and rock and roll talk if we, uh, as we usually refer to it, um, illegal drugs are illegal. You may have heard that some states have legalized marijuana, but even if that is true for the state law, you are on your immigration status are required to follow all federal laws. And so uh, smoking marijuana, even if it's legal in the state you are in, is still a violation of your immigration status because it's a violation of federal law. You should also know that even though firearms are very common in the United States, it is illegal to own a firearm if you are in the U.S. on a visa. And then for the sex part, sexual misconduct is a serious crime in the United States. It's also a serious student violation. You will see that as graduate students and undergraduate students, you will be required to do a uh, sexual misconduct um, set of trainings. And you should know that consent is a very important word and it is the most important um, aspect of sexual relations um, in the US and that consent is not possible if you are not sober. So a consent is not possible while you are under the influence of drugs or alcohol. And you really wanna understand these rules so that you don't get into any trouble in the US. This link is a link with a sexual assault awareness video that does describe what common rules are in the US um, for uh, interact, sexual, uh, sexually charged interactions. So 
we're telling you all of these things because it's important to know the laws that are pro problematic and avoid getting into any kind of trouble in the first place. Most of our students get into none of this trouble, but we want to make sure that everybody's aware so that they don't have problems. Any kind of violation really impacts you financially <coughs> in terms of getting representation, legal counsel, and they can have an effect on your immigration status. If you're charged with a crime or arrested, please seek legal assistance and do talk to a geo advisor so that you can understand if there is an impact on your immigration status. Finally, and you have made it to the last slide, you, if you're stopped by the police, immigration or FBI, these are your rights um, and sort of your responsibilities. Please try to stay calm and be polite. Don't run or resist. Keep your hands where they are visible. You have the right to refuse search unless the police have a warrant. You have the right to ask if you are free to leave. If the officer says yes, you say, I'm going to leave now, and you calmly walk away. If they say no, you are under arrest, and then you have the right to remain silent, have an attorney, and to contact your consulate. You want to really try, if that is your situation, do not lie, do not give false statements, do not sign anything without talking to a lawyer, and try to talk as little as you possibly can until you receive legal representation. All right, well, I hate to end on that scary note. I know that none of you are going to get into any kind of trouble and all of you are gonna completely understand the immigration rules and regulations, but please write down all of your questions and bring them all to your next cohort meeting where you're gonna ask your cohort group leader about them and the international advisor. Thank you all for listening. I'm sorry that it was so long and we'll see you next time. Bye.